Hello, this is Bren Antrim, one of the librarians here at the Santa Monica College Library. Today we're going to be doing a database tour of Archives Unbound, which is an excellent source for primary resources. Now, what is a primary resource? Well, according to the Library of Congress, a primary source can be an article, document, diary, manuscript, object, or information written or created at the time an event actually took place. Primary sources serve as an original source of information. So that could be a document, an eyewitness account, a manuscript, or even an object of art. What it is can vary by discipline, so if you're unsure, ask your instructor. And while primary sources can include first-hand accounts that are documented later, for example, if someone takes an oral history, primary sources created or written close to the time of the actual event are most useful for research. So for example, a primary source would be a photograph of Harry Houdini. A secondary source would be a website about his magic. A primary source would be the Gettysburg Address that President Lincoln gave at the battlefield. A secondary source would be an article about him. So it includes information about the primary source, but is not from the time that it actually occurred. So if your instructor has required you to use primary sources, it can be a little difficult to find them in the overwhelming mass of information that is available to you. And most of these things, because they are under some form of copyright, are not freely available on the web. So what do you do? Well, go to the library. In order to get to the library, you can mouse over student support and click on library, or you can click on student support, mouse down to academics, and library is in the middle. Once you're at the library, there are a variety of useful types of information and access links for you, including the databases we're going to explore, research topic guides that help you in a variety of different, uh, a variety of different topics. Um, you can book a study room. You can ask a librarian via chat 24-7 if you have a reference question. If we are closed, you will talk to a librarian belonging to a college or university in the consortium to, who, to which we belong. Um, and if they are unable to answer your question, say it's very SMC specific, they can create what's called a ticket. And that ticket will be sent to us. And when we are open again, we will email you and follow up to make sure that you got your answer. Our archived workshops and videos and our upcoming workshops are listed here as well as our upcoming events and links to useful resources. Our hours and contact information are listed at the bottom along with our social media. So today we're going to be looking at Archives Unbound, but how do you know to look for that if you don't know the name of the database? Well, you have a couple of ways to attack your search. For my search, I'm going to use um, Film History and I'm going to use Walt Disney as my search target. So if I go into all subjects, I could look under communication, um, I could look a little further and take a look at history, but I want to be really specific. Um, so I can look under all database types and see, are there primary documents listed? Well, not really, because most of our databases include both primary sources and secondary sources. So the next option would be to search for databases. Now, a warning here. When you search for databases, do not search for your topic. So for example, I would not search for Walt Disney because we don't have an entire database just on him, but we do have databases that include information about him. So I have to think bigger. When I'm looking at this topic, my topic is Walt Disney, but what I need to find about him is primary resources. So I'm just gonna use the word primary because if a database has primary sources, they, they might want to advertise it in their database description, was, which is what we're actually searching. So when I search for primary, I can go through the databases that come out, nine out of a hundred and some, and I can decide which one is the best one for my search. I might want to take a look at biography, that would be a good one, but I'm also going to go into Archives Unbound because it says specifically rare primary source documents. So I go into Archives Unbound, and at this point, if you are on your own device or off campus, you will have to log in to your SMC account in order to be able to use the database. I can explore my topics and go, wow, you know, there's a lot of stuff, but there's more than that in this database. So if you don't find what you're looking for in this first page, you can go into Collections, and it will show you all 426 collections of documents. 
Some of these have as few as, as four or five documents. Some of them have hundreds of documents. So I would scroll through here. I could also go by topic. I could go by document type. I could even search by language or by the library from which they came. But I'm going to keep it broad as we begin. And I'm looking at the history of Walt Disney right after World War II, when something called the Red Scare was going on, and a senator was attacking people that he considered to be communist. And he created a committee that ended up ruining the careers of a lot of people. Um, and this was supported by the U.S. government because the U.S. at that time was in a severe um, state of fear about communism taking over the country. So I know that these files were created by the FBI. So um, under J. Edgar Hoover, their first director, who had files on everyone about everything. So if I head down here, I think he was trying to justify having a job. But as I go down here, I can say, oh, here it is. The House Committee on Un-American Activities is the committee that Senator McCarthy used to go after a bunch of people. And I am specifically interested in Walt Disney, who was a director and um, heavily involved in the film industry at that time. This was before Disneyland. So if I go into the FBI file, Hollywood and J. Edgar Hoover, Investigations of Actors and Directors, this will give me a number of um, primary documents. So first off, it tells me a little bit about the person behind this. FBI's investigation of Hollywood revealed a growing organ operation organized in the early 1940s and the investigation involved into a sophisticated um, operation. Between 1944 and 1954, FBI agents surveilled suspected communists, quote, left-wingers, and quote, fellow travelers. And fellow travelers in this case was uh, defined as people who were sympathetic but were not actually members. So they were considered a threat. They assembled this information and it was used by the House Un-American Activities Committee in an effort to purge Hollywood of communist influence. And what they really did is they terrorized a whole lot of people and they ruined a lot of careers and they stunted the growth of the film industry. But what I'm really interested in here is I'm interested in Walt Disney. So I can search this specific collection for Mr. Disney and see what I get. And I not only did the FBI have files on Walt Disney, they had multiple files on Walt Disney. So I'm going to head into the first one. And when I click on that file, it is 220 pages long. And it's just the first one. That's way too much. So I think about my topic and I think, what is some sort of term about it that I'm interested in? Well, the FBI was exhaustive in their investigations, so I'm going to look at Walt Disney, the FBI, and film. And it tells me the actual FBI file that has been declassified that was on Mr. Disney. So if I take a look at this, I can say, oh, well, right off the bat, they thought that they could use him because of his prominence and wide acquaintanceship. He knew a lot of people to be of valuable assistance to this office. In other words, we can use him to try to turn on other people in the industry in order to bring them before the HUAC, um, get more names and widen this investigation slash witch hunt. So that is a beginning. Now that was the very first file that they opened up on him. Maybe I wanna also take a look at the last one to see if anything has changed. So when I click on that one, and I scroll down into the, into the document, you'll notice that it has secret um, marked out. That's because this was a sec classified secret file from 1956. And it looks like at this point, Walt Disney include, was a guest of honor from an organization called the Council for Pan-African Democracy, which they identified 
as a nationally circulated weekly journal of the Communist Party. Whether this is true or not, meh. But that's how the FBI identified it. So in the course of these six records, Walt Disney essentially went from a possible person they could use in order to infiltrate the film industry to a suspect of interest being associated with a communist um, propaganda instrument. So this sort of primary document can show you the level of um, invasion of privacy, of paranoia, of um, completeness that the FBI went into, even on major uh, figures within different industries, and specifically on Walt Disney. So this could be very useful if you're doing a history of the Disney Company, if you're doing a history of Mr. Disney himself, um, even if you're doing a history on um, the Red Scare in the 1950s and how that impacted the media um, industry. So if I like this, I can send it to myself in, e in email, I can download it, I can print it out. I can also ask it for a citation. So depending on which citation um, I'm required to use for my class, um, it will give me a basic form of that. And then I use the template my instructor gave me in order to um, fix it so that I don't get points taken off because the robot screwed up my cit citation. And then after I'm done with that, I can go back to my results and I can find related topics. Humphrey Bogart, Spencer Tracy, also targets of this investigation. I can broaden my search and I can use something called the Topic Finder, which goes through the database and gives me Yeah, this is specifically within this collection. So this gives me what topics are covered under that topic. I can also begin my search again and use specific terms. Now that I know them, I can say Walt Disney and FBI and communist. search that out and it will give me related articles about my topic and this is before the FBI investigation this is after those FBI documents so this is a way to um, spread it out and still get primary resource information keep in mind this is not the only thing you're relying on this is one of multiple databases that you're going to be using probably most of your research will be done in secondary resources and secondary sources but um, if you are required to use some primary sources to beef up or um, flesh out your research, Archives Unbound is an excellent database for that. If you have any questions, ask us at any time. Good luck with your research.